Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Luke Blondell, and with me, my co-host, Chris Gazelle. And we are NRL, NRL Talk. Talk. Cha, 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 cha. Uh, we are back for another episode of Review, Preview and Predictions. But before getting into the swing of things, we did say last week, if we can hit 50 likes on YouTube on our last episode, uh, we'll run a grand final competition and we hit... 56 likes, people. Are you serious? Yeah, 56 56. Likes. Uh, so we're going to run it this week and all you have to do to enter on YouTube and Facebook is... Share and comment on the this week's game, the Roosters versus the Tigers. So we want first try scorer yep. and we want... The winning margin. Also, it's the first in. So if two people predict the same one, it's the first person that gets in. We aren't going to monitor it. No. We're only going to go through at the end. So make sure to read through the comments so you don't accidentally do the same one. That's exactly right. And as, uh, as we just said, you have to share the post. We see everyone. Uh, Facebook and YouTube give us the ability to see who shares our post. So all you have to do is share it to your timeline or share, share it anywhere to Twitter uh, with our link, with our video, uh, and your comment of so, for example, I think uh, Flash Gordon, Michael Gordon in the Roosters game, first try scorer, and I think Roosters by a margin of 20. And I'm so, going uh, Masters first try scorer, but the Roosters to win by six. Yes, yeah, so that's all you have to do is share the video and then comment who you think is going to be the first try scorer on the margin, and two double pass grand final tickets could be yours. Could be yours, and they're going to be really good seats too, so it's all worth it. Uh, but let's jump straight into our review from last week. Uh, let's start in the, the first game. Yeah, so Souths beat the Bulldogs 28-14 to 14 in a, what could only be described as a blockbuster. The uh, first time the Bulldogs have scored 14 points since round 18. That's pretty embarrassing. Yeah, that's insane. Uh, Souths, it was just clinical. We didn't uh, preview it for too long. No. Uh, and we didn't need to. Souths were all over them. Uh, they won it pretty much in the first half, really. Yep. Bulldogs got a couple of tries. They got a lucky one. Uh, they're just not there, are they? Just send it away. Josh Reynolds got injured, yep. uh, which was a bad one, done his calf. So the the season's over for both teams. But yep. Sam Burgess just keeps playing but keeps getting hurt. Uh, crime and first touch line break. Yeah, yeah. Um, good signs for South, not so good signs for Bulldogs, and pretty much the season is, is just gone, those two teams. It certainly is. Uh, yeah, Sam Burgess at the moment, a complete super coach nightmare. Uh, either play or, or don't. Don't keep playing and then go off injured. It's, it, it, that's just one interchange that they don't need to use. Uh, obviously, both teams can't make the finals, but in saying that, they're both playing for pride, and unfortunately, Bulldogs ain't going anywhere with that. Not too much to talk about this game. As you just said, Rabbitohs were clinical. They did what they had to do. It wasn't really exciting game, but let's jump on to the very next game, and oh boy, oh boy, Chris. So, Newcastle upsets Parramatta 29-10, to and, you know, it wasn't just an upset. They beat them. Parramatta yeah. were dreadful, especially in the second half. I think they came out there thinking they'd win. Newcastle have won three on the trot. They seem to have found a little bit of passion. Uh, you seem to be a little bit disgruntled with uh, the way they've uh, adapted to the leniency of the rules and exploiting them a little bit like some of the other teams have. But you can't deny they're the better team. They certainly were. I was watching it uh, 12-10 at one point. Uh, Eel, it, yeah, Eels had a line dropout. Uh, sorry, Knights had, had a line dropout, kick it to the Eels, uh, and Matungi ran it, ran it back, and he ran it back strong. And I'm like, Eels are going to win this. They've just had another passion. Uh, but at the 65th minute, uh, Eels had completed three sets in the second half. That's 25 minutes, and they've completed three sets. I've never... Ever, ever seen that before in my life that a team has completed three sets in 25 minutes. They were playing the team that's coming last for a chance to get in the top four for a second chance in the finals. Yep, and completely screwed themselves. Uh, that's why I don't think anyone really takes them that serious. I don't think they're a team that... If it was Roosters and Eels in one of the finals, I would be like, eh, like, that's, that's an easy win for Roosters. I can't take them serious. At the moment, there's three teams that can win the grand final, and probably with the list that the Raiders have, if they win all the games, including beating the Storm in the last round, you'd put them in there. But that's it. Like... Parramatta are not there. If you can't beat Newcastle at home, 
and you can't that's complete right. sets. That's exactly right. Yeah, you can't afford to switch off. Maybe that's the game they needed, but you know, I've been saying that about the Sharks' losses for a while. You certainly it's have. Uh, but look, congratulations to the Knights. You know, they, they started off really strong. They started off well, and they held their lead. And look, at the end of the day, I, like, I still don't rate them as a team, but the only unfortunate thing for Knights is they're winning, but so are West Tigers. So Knights are trying to get off that wooden spoon. Yeah. West Tigers are winning as well. Uh, you know, I had a few things to say about the the Knights a few weeks ago, just about their, their playing style and, and milk and penalties and all that sort of stuff. But look, they beat the informed Parramatta Eels, so good on them. Yeah, well done. All right, let's jump on to the very next game. Uh, uh, let's just skip. This jeez, game. dude. Oh, well, jeez. I'm happy to skip this review. Broncos versus <laughs> Sharks, thirty-two to ten. Yeah, disgraceful. Uh, Sharks got together, uh, all the players, and said, you know, we need to get our get our act together. They didn't get their act together and they got ripped apart in the fringes, especially Mogar on Kate Wells' yeah. side, really missing Bird in defence. But it's the, uh, like terrible defence is an understatement to how Kate Well and Townsend tried to tackle Mogar. Like literally one little palm off and scoot away for a try. And a nice step as well. Uh, Broncos have, like, uh, sorry, Sharks have a really good record up at Sun, Suncorp. Like, it's not like they were going up there as their bogey team. Well, what's worrying for the Sharks is we were, Tell me, we were number one in defence. Defence yeah. is all about attitude, and we're conceding points lately, and they're pretty easy points. The Gillette try when he broke three tackles to get through. Gillette's a gun. That's basically he probably one of the best second rows in the game he for is. a while. Yep. Uh, and on top of that, we can't score points at the moment either. Yeah. It's not looking good. Uh, we're not in form at the wrong time of year. Uh, Especially Gallon's 300th game. Everyone just like super coach, for example, captain him. He's yeah. going to have a blinder. He's going to be amazing. He's going to be a gun. Uh, well, Brisbane just had the ball for yeah. it was like 60% of the time or something like that. But see, that's all from knock ons. Yeah, that's all from penalty giving away yeah. penalties. Maloney. Uh, if we had, if we used to do our most disappointing player of the round, it would have been James Maloney, twice kicking out on the full, uh, knocking the ball on, I think gave away three or four penalties. Well, that's Maloney this year, um, the most penalised player. Did he come back too early? Possibly. Like, I think they wanted him because this was a game they thought they needed to win. Yeah. Uh, luckily, we're still in the top four, but... It's just not good enough. No. Like, not good enough at all. No, it's not a uh, disgusting game to watch. It wasn't even an enjoyable game to watch. It was literally, some people were saying this is going to be the clash of the round and it was literally like watching, you know, Broncos Brisbane, versus Titans yeah, all Brisbane over just again. Yeah, over the top of the Sharks and not even, Sharks didn't even look like they were in it. That's exactly right. All right, let's jump on to the very next game because I know you don't want to stay on that game <laughs> uh, too much. What was the next game? Yeah, please? Dragons beating the Titans 42-16. Uh, Dragons either they can't score points or they can score a lot. Uh, Neil Henry said it's either he goes or Jared Hain goes. Yeah, I think apparently that wasn't. Uh, it's all me. It's all the media. Yeah, it's, it's all the media. Uh, I read a rumor that uh, against uh, the game coming up this week against the Parramatta Eels will be his last game as coach. Neil Henry. Yeah. yeah, his last game as coach. Well, last week you said Titans wanted it more. I don't think I don't know no. what the Titans want now no. because they have just been terrible since after Origin. Something's going on. Maybe yeah. it is Hain. I saw a, I saw a photo today of every single club Hain's been at and the coaches that are either sacked. Uh, or left the job, and there was about eight of them. Did you hear the story that when Hayne first arrived at the Titans, they had to lock the toilets because he didn't? Every time they did sprints at end of training, he would uh, always have to go to the toilets. No. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe he might be one of those players with so much talent, but isn't coachable, so he doesn't fit the team structure. What they want, he might. Um, only speculation here. Uh, he's undeniably a great talent. He yeah. had about three good games this year yeah. and the rest have been pretty underwhelming you know what he needs to do go to a good team imagine with more talent sorry Titans with more talent uh, a team like the Melbourne Storm a team like the Sydney I think he would fit really well in at the Sydney Roosters the structure of Sydney Roosters just go to a team that is surrounded by a lot of talent oh you'd rather Teddy than um, Hay. oh of course yeah. of course but or, look if you wouldn't take Hayne at the Sharks if he causes that much trouble behind if he's yeah. the kind of player that uh and i don't know this is just room and speculation if this, he's the kind of player that avoids extra training yeah uh and doesn't do or doesn't fit the structures then no i wouldn't want him out of the sharks yeah but on a talent level oh undeniably one of the best talents in the game right now but he's yeah. not performing is he no 
But again, we don't know what's going on behind yeah. the scenes. Anyway, uh, absolutely crazy. There was something we posted on. Sorry, not we. There was something I posted on Facebook that got huge attention. Yeah. It got, I think, about 60 likes. It got like eight shares. Uh, it had comments after comments uh, about Cameron McInnes throwing the ball into camera Kevin Proctor who was laying on the ground not even when I went on about uh, uh, the Knights and Dragons game where DeBellin was laying down and the ball was straight into him from dummy half but Proctor was laying on the ground uh, you knew my frustration on that and I know you're going to say but all teams do it they're only doing what all other teams are doing <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was going to say in that voice as well yeah, so uh, but Jeez, it made me furious, and it made all you guys furious as well. You're frustrated because of the player. I'm frustrated because the laws and the refs are letting this happen. No, that's why I'm frustrated. No. I'm not frustrated. Well, I'm frustrated, Karen, <laughs> for, for doing it because the refs are allowing it. But that's the underlying issue here is that the refs are allowing it. Because at one stage, they were pulling everyone up on it and saying, play on. And now they're just giving into it. I'll tell you what, they'll, go, they'll stop doing it if uh, the refs just let the play go on. Yep. And you pass it into that play and it spills off and the opposition gets it, just play on. Yep. If they don't roll out enough, if they're crowding um, the actual play the ball and on the hands and knees and they're just not rolling out and that happens, it's fair enough. You can't be yep. able to play the ball. But if you are in a position where you're not going to impede it... That's right. Yeah. Which I thought Kevin Proctor, you know, even when he got up, he was like, he was furious because he wasn't anywhere near to play the ball and he was laying on the ground and to try and pass the ball downwards and like scooping up like it's just it, it, they were always going to win the game but it's just so disappointing to see because if that was in a grand final and there was like two minutes to go and it was right in front and that happened there'd be riots there's man all these riots. riots they tried to make the um, games quicker yeah and Done teams the are exploiting the rules and coming up and it's clever tactics and it, it might not be good sportsmanship and it's not good viewing either but they've exploited these rules that have come in uh, and now, yeah, it's penalties galore. Uh, like the obstruction rules, just all over the place at the moment. Um, it's yeah, it's it's disappointing. And I wish it was such a clean game. Yeah. Uh, but you know, they're always going to do it. That's why it's the officiating and the, the people who come up with the rules to clean this up. A uh, huge positive from the game, Kurt Mann. I uh, have an absolute blinder. Uh, apparently, he's going to retain his position in the team. Oh, he's a good player. He's a good talent. And he's uh, got good footwork and a lot of acceleration. Uh, but again, like all the Dragon supporters said, oh, you know, we flogged him. You know, we're definitely a top eight chance. We're going to be in that grand final just because they beat the Titans. So, they're starting to sound like Raiders supporters yeah, all over again. Mind you, the Raiders might have something to do. Uh, <laughs> I know. As yeah. you said during the week, we might have to eat our hats or our shoe or so eat some sort of clothing. Some delicious cake. Yeah. Next game. This was not. You were very frustrated at the Storm at beating the Roosters 16 to 13. Uh, I was penalty try. Yeah, look, that second half was a lot better refereed. I don't know if they got a phone call from Tony <laughs> Archer or something at half time. Except to say. for one moment. Yes, except for one moment. Uh, if that was a grand final. I would be satisfied if I if without the terrible decisions in that game because that yeah. penalty try, uh, Vinny Valley jumping in the air, uh, the fact that Roosters like knocked it on and then Billy Slater ran behind his own player. Yeah, apparently, an advantage is when you take four meters. <laughs> One second. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I remember a few weeks ago the Panthers actually ran ten meters and knocked the ball over the line and they said no advantage. Yeah, uh, why not call it? If he said obstruction, call it straight away. Yeah, call it no advantage. That is not an advantage when you run four metres around your player and they call it obstruction. It was definitely an obstruction. Yeah, I have no oh, doubt. Without a doubt, But yeah. the Storm should have got the ball back. Yeah. So, uh, like, both ways, like, Storm and Enter the Roosters, the refereeing in the first half. Was the, the penalty was try wasn't a penalty try. <laughs> not Mitchell, at all. Uh, Latrell Mitchell should have got 10 in the bin. It should yep. have been a penalty. Yep. You can't guarantee that someone's going to score. He's, he's probably very close, but the ball is bobbing each way. It was, that's right. And from what we've seen in the season, we've seen 10 in the bin and... Uh, uh, penalty. That's exactly right. Yeah, I I don't know what to say about it. Like, I, I tipped the Storm. I always thought the Storm yeah. was going to win. But when Roosters were up 13 to 12 uh, with five minutes to go, I'm like, this is, this is it. And then all of a sudden, Jake Friend on the last tackle passes it to Blake uh, Ferguson. And, kind of... and then Ferguson booted it out for a seven-tackle set. All I had to do was take the tackle, put it out in, in the scrum. Storm could have still easily made it downfield. You know, you have the likes of Cronk and Smith and Slater. Like, these... 
people, these players are match winning mm. players, you know what I mean? There was no guarantee. It, would, it was to, it was always going to come down to the last, you know, a couple of minutes. I really hope Roosters play every game like they played because their forwards, uh, they hit hard. Every yep. tackle, they were trying to hurt the Storm forwards. They were trying to run over the top and really show they can't be bullied and it was really good viewing. Well, the Storm players came out and said that, yes, in fact, that they treated it like a grand final because mm. it was hard, but you actually mentioned to me that Roosters can take them. Roosters can beat them, and it showed. Yeah. The, yeah. the line breaks, we, we busted their line. It wasn't like Storm were absolutely, you know, unstoppable. We should have potentially won that game. Yeah, a good, a good signs for the Roosters. So, uh, but yeah, uh, other than that, like, Vinavali obviously jumping up. Yeah, how was that? It's, it's, it's tough. I think they should bring in the rule, if you get on report, you go to the sin bin. I, I really honestly believe that, uh, because you can't... Because what's the difference between... Uh, when like Phil Mano got hit, it like in in the head uh, with with the knee, sorry, uh, and then oh, players, Phil Mano Brown, yeah, Phil yeah. Mano Brown, uh, and then players like Conrad Hurrell leading him with the knee and getting put on report and suspended. What's the difference between that and jumping up in the air like that? Vinaval will never do that again. No, right? he'll never do that again. But what if it did make contact to the head? And that's the thing. So I think if you get put on report, go to the bin for ten. Uh, because you obviously you put on report, you're putting the other player in a dangerous position. I think go uh, for 10 if the other player has to go off. Yeah. If you lose a player, even if it's the HIA, if you lose a player, then go to 10. But if it's one of those things where the other player stays on, I think it can be. Do you reckon then... Te- oh, that's a stupid question. Of course teams are going to exploit that. Exploit of course everything. teams are going to exploit that. All right, let's, enough of that game. Really great game. That was a grand final. I'll be, I'll be happy, as, happy as I can be if Roosters lost. Uh, let's jump on to the very next game. Uh, Penrith, 24 to the Cowboys, 16. The first top eight team they've beaten in a while. Uh, they came from behind to do it. Injuries kind of hindered the Cowboys. Yeah. Might have, might have went the Cowboys way if the players stayed on the park. Should have been try to go on S. But kudos to Penrith. Uh, they've put themselves in the eight. I think they're sixth at the moment. Yeah, something so, like that. Yeah, so... Should have been trying to go with Ness. I'm sorry. Should have been trying. I showed you the footage. Yeah. I saw it on a 65-inch high-definition <laughs> TV. Uh, it touched the blade of grass. You could see it on one of the, the behind angle. Uh, you saw the grass move. It should have been a try. They would have won the game. Again, another decision that has literally nearly cost, I think, the Cowboys potentially their season in the finals. Well, yeah. I mean, I'll tell you what, if they lose the next game, the Raiders keep on winning. Yep. It's very, very tight in that bottom eight. And it's really good to see that it's actually a battle because that, it started to look like after about round 19 that it was just all set and forget. That's right. So a lot of interesting games. I still don't rate the Panthers. I just like, yes, the second team that they're beating in the top eight, I still don't rate them. They just beat a team with no Thurston. Morgan had to go off injured. Lachlan Coote was injured. Uh, you know, uh, no Gavin Cooper. They, they only just beat a team who was missing half of their first grade squad. That, to me, I'm sorry, but... Penrith keep on winning, but, yeah, they don't seem to be that good of a side. Like, yeah. they're not at that quality that, that you need to be. Uh, it's just so many teams are so inconsistent at the moment that they're taking advantage of it, and they had a, a really good run home. Well, they, uh, the Panthers remind me at the moment of the Parramatta Eels. So, winning, 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 winning. Came up against a team who was more hungry, lost. Right. And I feel like this week, it's going to show exactly where Panthers are at. Yeah, exactly where they're this at. is a good game. All right, let's jump on to the very next game, Chris. Uh, Raiders beating the Warriors, 36-16. Uh, we always talk about uh, the Leipana, but what about Kotrick and Croker? They are just as dangerous on the other side. The yep. fringes for the Raiders are just phenomenal. Kotrick's mm-hmm. probably going to be Rookie of the Year. Mm-hmm. He's bust so many tackles. He's got so much speed and he's so strong. Uh, yeah, they were just too good. They're always going to be too good. Kieran Foran was out. That was why well, I tipped the Warriors. Yeah. Nearly instantly regretted it, but as soon as I heard Foran out, I'm like, well, that was a tip gone wrong. Yeah. Uh, but look, Raiders, they won it. As, and, you know, we said a few. So I particularly said to a few, like personal t- to people, there's no way Raiders are going to make it. And now they're proving themselves whether or not they are coming up against teams who are terrible. They are proving themselves in the scoreline and in their defence uh, that they can make the top eight. So uh, yeah, look, Warriors. Uh, I think the owner is selling the Warriors now. Uh, the Warriors are just one of those teams just the season's gone from bad to worse but it it seems like it's happening every year now well when you lose Johnson uh, but it shouldn't be like that it shouldn't be look at the Cowboys man 
who are falling out of that. Yeah, but now like they're missing like Gavin Cooper's yeah, going yeah, and they've got like eleven Morgan, players out. Of eleven to twelve yeah. players of their fir- initial first grade squad out. Like, but when they lost Thurston, they were still winning games and they were still playing well. It's because they lost. Uh, they didn't play Munu uh, Batabai. Potentially, I'll go with that. Yeah, why not? Uh, many of is probably thinking that. He's yeah. like, well, that's not my problem anymore. All right, let's jump on to the very last game. Big upset. A game I tipped the margin on you and did. the winning tip. So Luke tipped five out of eight and tipped the West Tigers by four. I tipped four out of eight. Uh, con- slightly controversial finish to this game, but merely just threw it away after being ahead uh, at half time. 30 to 26, the Tigers won. Teddy phenomenal, Nofaloma brilliant. Tom Trevojevic uh, should have just put on a West Tigers jersey. Yeah, he threw two passes straight to Nofo. Uh, the f- try at the end, is, was it forward? It looked forward. I was watching on my phone on the way home. Uh, there was an obstruction as well, which has gone 50-50 this season. Like, uh, if Cherry Orange probably dived to the ground mm. dramatically, they might have got away with it. I'm glad that it was an obstruction, but I actually thought the pass was slightly forward. Whether it drifted forward, was forward out of the hands is something else. But Tigers, well done. You and I uh, were watching that actually on, on the way back from where we were. Uh, and then I went home and I watched the replay on my computer and I don't think it was forward. It I thought it was very flat. Yeah. Uh, I've seen worse. No, so not worse called forward. It could have gone either way. I said to you, actually, when we're in the car, I don't think they wanted to make the decision to deny yeah. them, especially at Leichhardt. Um, yeah, I don't think, even with the instruction, could have went either way. I don't think they wanted to deny them the win. Uh, whether or not that comes down to fixed or, or not, I just think that person, the, that position had a lot of pressure on them and then they just decided, all right, well, the ref gave it a try. I'm, I'm really just going to let all the responsibility yeah. go on the referee side. But in saying that, Manly, they gave up a 20 to 6 point lead. Again, this is why you can't take them serious. Yeah, their defence is just all over the place. Yeah, uh, especially like we spoke about it, Tapao playing 40 minutes. Mm, uh, which you- is surprising. He's got a motor on him. And he's just not playing the minutes. No. He's such an impact player. And when he's got 40 minutes, and a lot of it was spent defense. Yeah. So he's such a dangerous ball runner with such an offload. And maybe he's slightly injured. Maybe he's got a bit of wear and tear. Maybe they thought, let's save him for the finals. And now they're looking like they, you know, they're not a certainty for the finals now. No. Uh, yeah. Uh, it is really at the moment, like, Storm, Broncos, and Roosters are sort of the, that benchmark yeah. at the moment. The only advantage for the Sharks is that they come up against the Roosters. Uh, was that next week or the last round? No, I'm pretty sure it's next week. Uh, uh, you know, and it's Roosters bogey team, uh, and Roosters can't seem to beat the Sharks. So, uh, but yeah, at the moment, that that benchmark is Storm. Uh, Broncos and and the, Roosters. and the Roosters. All right, let's jump on to uh, round 24, previews and predictions. But again, before we get into it, competition, share this video on your Facebook to YouTube to Twitter. And if you do, all you have to do is comment. Uh, First try scorer and the margin for the Roosters and West Tigers game. That's exactly right. Let's jump straight into it, Chris. Whoa. Thursday night. Parramatta up against the Titans. What? Whoa, we got a cracker here. Yeah. Uh, but luckily for the Eels, Bevan French is in with yep. Will Smith dropping to the extended bench. Mm-hmm. Titans are unchanged. I've gone the Eels by 20. Yep. I think uh, they'll definitely rebound. And Titans, they don't have anything in defense at no. the moment. I don't see this going any other way. No. Uh, Jesus, if the Eels lost this one. Oh. You would you'll kiss their top eight chances goodbye. Yeah. If they if they lost, uh, Titans didn't score. Oh, they they're definitely top eight. No, sorry. Yeah. Um, Titans didn't score a point. I think they set for 154 minutes because obviously they versed the Broncos yeah. and didn't score a try the week before. Uh, They've conceded 54 and 42 points in the last two weeks and scored 16. That's not a good sign. That's not a good sign, especially a team that looked like they were going to be in the top eight. Obviously, again, we don't want to talk too much about it, but all this Hain situation and the coach and tearing the team apart and whatnot. Uh, I tip Eels by 24. Again, I cannot see it going any other way. Eels need this game, uh, and they're on the rebound. Uh, they'll be on the prowl. Jeez, spread it wide. Give it to Radradra. Uh, You're just saying that because you put him in your super case, do you? Yeah, I, I know. But yeah. they leak points like anything out wide, so... Oh, dude, this is the game. If you have Eels play, this is the game to play him. Up on I might vice captain Nathan Brown. He might get over. He might get nine tries the way they're scoring against oh, the Titans. So. 
Uh, yeah, not not too many shining lights for the Titans. Jared Wallace has probably been there, and Ryan James yep. been the most consistent this year. They were dropping like flies in the Dragons game, though. Like nothing like too concerned when it comes to injuries because obviously they're unchanged. But I think they made about three or four interchanges that uh, weren't really necessary, but they were going down injured. Well, so. That's been their season. Unfortunately, it has, but what, what can you do? It's just all a part of footy. Yeah, uh, get ready for next year. Yeah, all right, let's not much talk about that, so let's jump no. on to the very next game, which I suppose is not too much to talk about. Another this one either. cracker. South's up against the Warriors. Uh, South's unchanged 17, but Sam Burgess has gone to prop, not lock. Yeah. For the Warriors, Foreign and Gubb are in. Yeah. Madalino and Lino are out. I've tipped, the South, I've tipped South's by 12 points. Yeah. Don't really see the the Warriors have lost six in a row, uh, not playing very well. Can't win away from Mount Smart. No, nothing happening. I think South might go three in a row. Yeah, again, it, it means nothing except for pride. But you just can't tip the Warriors. I'm I'm done with the Warriors this season. Yeah. Like I, I love to watch them and I love to tip them. Uh, but unfortunately, like they, they try and they try hard, and Simon Mannering is such a great player, and he always gives 100%, and it mm. sucks to see players who do give 100% not get rewarded for it. I tipped the Rabbits by 14. Uh, there's Again, we can't talk about this game because it's literally just going to be a one-sided affair. There's no bearing on any results for the finals. It's literally just a, a training run. It uh, is. And maybe change and you know, have a play with some structures. Like... There's no harm in it. There's no harm. I thought at this stage you'd play some kids who might be carving yeah. up, but I suppose with salary cap restrictions and things like that. Uh, did you hear on the rumour mill that Kieran Foran's contract has not been officially uh, done because mm. they uh, do not know if they can afford, the Bulldogs can afford a Kieran Foran, so he might be without a club. There are so many issues with the salary cap so many teams trying to exploit it yeah uh, you look at the bulldogs list and you kind of question how you overspending that. well they, they're overspending so they're, they're spending overs on players like i don't know how like who they get aaron woods and kieran foreign yeah well here's an example we spoke about it uh when it first came out moses and by uh potentially could be playing reserve grade next year on a million dollar contract. That's insane that he's getting paid. A, a player's getting paid this amount and then they can just be like, I'm getting the money, you know, I not don't have to perform to get this. You have to perform when you get in to prove your wealth, worth or create value for yourself. Then they get paid this massive amount of money. Then look at Jared Hayne. Then Look at the Dragons. Yeah. Then we don't perform. Who cares? I'm getting money. I've done what I needed to do. Yeah. Look. Well, you look at... At the moment, like Tao Malolo. Yes, it may not be his fault that, except for last week because he's had a blinder, but yes, it might not be his fault that he uh, is only playing 50 minutes a game, mm. but he is a million dollar a year player and he's playing 50 minutes. Mm. I'd love to divide that up to see exactly how much he's getting, what, like $1,000 per minute. It'd be something ridiculous. Like I'd throw a million dollars at Teddy. To yeah. kind of money. Like, I'd rather Teddy in my team than Lolo. Even though Lolo is a gun, don't get me wrong, but Teddy has that X factor yeah. uh, where he can break games open. See, it's, so. gr it's great to see players like, like obviously, Jonathan Thurston worth every cent. Darren Lockyer are worth every cent. You know, you're getting these players who are worth every cent, but then you're getting these players who are, for some reason, being offered. Like, I read today that Greg Eastwood will be on $700,000 a season. How can you justify that? He's not a seven... Well, who is a $700,000 player, but... It's I'm not insane. saying that Greg, Greg Eastwood would be watching because he loves us, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying you're a bad player. I'm just saying in regards to, like, Adam Elliott, uh, he's on $150,000 a season. Mm. Uh, you're looking at Carrot Holland, he's on $100,000 a season. Uh, you probably got... Uh, who's the other guy for the Bulldogs who's, who's a gun, uh, who they've dropped? Uh, Branko Lee. Branko Lee. I think he's on about 150 a season as well. I can't believe he got dropped for that long. But you, You've got these players who are on 100000 150000 who are w willing to give it their all and play every game. And then you've got these seven hundred, eight hundred million dollar players who don't give a shit. Mm, who aren't performing. No, nah, and there's no excuse why they're not bef like not performing. If they have an injury, don't play them. Like a, I just don't, it's frank. I think I said it about ten or twenty times over the weekend to my old man when I was watching it, watching footy. I'm just like this player is literally on nearly a million dollars a season, and he's crap. Like I don't, I don't get it. Like, do they take it for granted? Possibly. Do they? They've finally got themselves in the position and they just don't care anymore. 
But enough about that, Chris. Let's jump on to our very next game. It is the Broncos up against the Dragons. Friday night football, of course. Broncos are playing. This might be the first time it's happened. Both teams unchanged. That's easy for you. That makes your job easy. Yes. You have a very hard job to pronounce names. I do, uh, and I suck at it. (laughs) Pronouncing names. Uh, Hopefully I don't suck at this. Uh, But, yeah, both teams unchanged. I tipped the uh, Brisbane Broncos by 16 points. Yeah. I hope Dragons win. Really? Yeah, I do. Because Sharks, so Sharks can go up. I'd rather uh, Sharks against the Dragons than Sharks against the Raiders. Yeah. (laughs) Fair and enough. They, uh, eight, but yeah, look, I don't see it happening. Yeah. Uh, it should. You know, I hope Dragons put the the best foot forward and and put their attacking style. But Can't see it, man. No, Brisbane are too good. It's I think Brisbane as well. Like, I I tip Broncos by fourteen. I cannot even consider it. I think it's going to be a high scoring game. I'm surprised I didn't tip Broncos by more. Mm. The way the Dragons have been playing, but I suppose the Dragons will be like. This is the must win. Maybe they'll take it to them. Maybe they'll win. But you have to go by form. And unfortunately, you can't judge that Dragons versus Titans game. You need to go on the prior games. And unfortunately, the Broncos, are. I think they've found their, their mark. Yeah. They've the found their stride. Yeah, the, what they did to the Sharks, even the Sharks gave them too much of the ball and, and did half the work for them. Yeah. Uh, they've done more than enough. For them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they've done more than enough to, to tell me that they're going to win this game and they're going to win it pretty easily. Uh, ben Hunt hurt himself at training today, uh, but he is still playing, but apparently it did look bad for a second, mm. but apparently he's going to win. It'll be interesting. Obviously, this is a club he's going to join next year. Yeah. Uh, it'd be interesting if he didn't play and they used the excuse of... Uh, Injured, laid out. Yeah. yeah. It, it'd be very... Well, that's the first thing I thought of when, uh, when I read the article, but... Uh, yeah, look, at the end of the day, you, you can't tip against the Broncos. It's it's up at Suncorp. You you just can't, can you? Yeah, I just can't see a way that Dragons will win. Like, uh, Milford's doing well. Roberts and uh, Gillette are, are freaks. Oh, there Gillette. You go. Moga is, just, like, stepping up. Great defence as well for, for Brisbane. Yeah. Yeah, I... Brisbane by 16. It's hard, like, and, and it's interesting, and, and we do apologise if you're not, I suppose, a fan of our sort of two-ish minute reviews at the moment, but when you have games like the Eels game and the Rabbits game and, and games that aren't necessarily exciting, there's only so much we can talk about what's yeah. actually going on. But, yeah, in that in that Broncos and Dragons game, uh, uh, it's all you have to say is Suncorp Stadium and, and finals footy, and if, if Broncos win, I think that would nearly guarantee them a top two spot. So top. that... That's something. Well, I think the Roosters might. Oh, what you reckon? Yeah, I think the Roosters. They're performing well. Like, I would have thought against the Sharks next week that, you know, Sharks usually have it over them, but I. Big time. What have the Sharks been doing since that game? Yeah, but still, they were terrible. Before. The Sharks were terrible. They got flogged by Manly the, the week before. Yeah. See, that's the thing. Like, Manly going crap at the moment, Roosters lost to them. Sharks going crap at the moment, Roosters lost to them. They're losing against these teams that are underperforming, but then Roosters can go out and beat and nearly beat the best in the comp. So uh, let's jump on to the very next game, uh, the first Saturday game. Yeah, Knights up against the Storm. So for the Knights, unchanged 17. Uh, For the Storm, Cameron Munster, huge in. Huge. Even though he has not scored a try this season. No, we did look at that today. Uh, Glasby is out. Yep. I've tipped the Storm by eight. Knights are playing some decent football. Yeah. Uh, you know, Storm could win this 54 to nothing and we wouldn't be surprised, but I think it's going to be a little bit tighter than that. The thing that's going well from the Knights at the moment is they're scoring early against mm. the Dragons, what, 12 points in like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, uh, against the Eagles, two tries straight away, and then they're holding that, that lead. Brock Lamb has been killing it lately. He has been playing so well, setting up tries. Mitch Barnett Mitch as Barnett, well. just a gun. Very, very, very good second row. Uh, so they've got some talent. They definitely have some talent. It's not the players like Dane Gaga that are the ones that are winning. It's nice. it's a team effort. Everyone's stepping up. The uh, Saifedi brothers are, are playing well. So Danny Levi is finding his form. Damn, they're doing well. The last three games has been there's been some quality for Newcastle, and we've been looking for that the whole season because they've been trying and trying, and then they just haven't quite been there. But maybe something's clipped. Well, look, it's it's the end of the footy season now. I suppose they want to beat teams. If I was in a team, if we're coming last in our professional sport... Yeah, we are professionals. I will, well, someone scored a goal, so I've joined the elite club. 
uh, I would be like, all right, let's go out to try and make them not make the finals or, yeah. you know, the Eels, like, they're going to get a top four. Let's do everything we can so they don't get top four. I would want to be spiteful because I'm a very spiteful person. <laughs> and uh, spiteful. I tipped Storm by seven. Yeah. I think field goal with about 15, 10 minutes to go. I think we only do field goals if we're two points behind in NRL now. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. that's right. Locked yeah. up Luke Greg English, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then they'll just score a uh, nice no, short kickoff and then Storm score off that. So I think Kafusi to Slater. So that's what I'm feeling. Yeah. Uh, but, yes, I tip Storm by seven. I, as you said, it could be 54-0, 54 to four, uh, and we wouldn't even blink an eye. We're like, oh, we saw it coming. But, yeah. again, we go by what we see and what we watch on paper. Uh, and Storm, they might have a little bit less gas in the tank coming from that really tough, mm. tough win. Uh, but yeah, I hope the Knights challenge them. I hope it's a really good game. It'd, it'd be a shame for the Knights to like win, 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 get slaughtered. absolutely slaughtered. Yeah. So especially to finish off this season, they got some tough games coming up the Knights. They certainly do. But I am Storm by seven. Storm by eight. Let's jump on to the very next game. Uh, Saturday at five thirty. This is the big game for you guys because you've got to pick the first try scoring. Yes, you've got to you do. Pick the winning margin. That's right. Which I've done. Roosters by six. Yeah. And you went? Roosters by 20. Uh, Flash Gordon is in. Yep. Joseph Manu, which will be Finally. Fine. I love you, Manu. I really do. But I just feel like at the moment you're a bit of a weakness in the team. Uh, we should have said pick the winning margin, the team and the winning margin. Of course. Uh, Chris Lawrence is in and Aloy is out. Probably pronounce that incorrectly. But that's just something funny for you guys to... Uh, <laughs> oh, everyone <laughs> laughed, man. I can hear yeah. it. Uh, yeah, Roosters by six. Tigers are playing some decent footy. Yep. Teddy is tearing through the park. Lola here has been great for him. He has. Brooks even played a little bit uh, better than what normally does and, and, and played well. Forwards performing. It's really good to see that the Tigers players that are leaving the club... Are stepping trying up, trying their hardest. Yep. So obviously they has some passion. They've enjoyed their time there. Yeah. It's just unforeseen circumstances like extra money has a lot of has pushed them out of the club. Yeah. Look, I went Roosters by twenty, and and the reason I went with that is yes, West Tigers have been playing unreal footy. Mm. I just feel like Roosters coming off that loss, they want that top two spot. I feel like they have a harder run home uh, than. Uh, the Broncos. Uh, so, yeah, I, I really feel like they'll step it up. I feel like it may be close in the first half, and then they'll just run away with it. But Flash Gordon back, a huge in. Uh, if they play like they did last week against the Storm, they'll run oh, all over the West definitely. Tigers. I don't mind Connor Watson at fullback. Uh, before they signed Tedesco, you wouldn't have thought. Like, I would have been happy for the Roosters, and I think Roosters fans would have been happy if Connor Watson was a fullback next yeah. year. I just think he stepped it up in that game. Yeah. And it's such, again, it's such a shame to see players step up and, and be amazing. Like I said, Simon Mannery and then lose the game. But I suppose there has to be a winner and there has to be a loser. But I feel like, and I've said it all year, I've never been confident in the Roosters. I feel like they have that next level to bring. And I thought they'd bring it in that game. Yeah. And even though they lost, it's exciting to see. Yeah, it was good there. Jeez, the forwards hit hard. Napper and Maria Hargraves. Oh. So entertaining to watch. I just don't think the Tigers can match speed. I don't think the, the Tigers can match, like, ball playing, uh, kicking. I don't think they can match them in the forwards. Yeah, the forwards is a big one. I just feel like, uh, like I said, it would probably be close in the first half, maybe six or eight points, and then I just reckon Roosters will just down the fringes, just run all over them. It'd be, I think Teddy might snag a couple. Yeah, he usually does. Uh, a couple of no tries. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's exactly, no yeah, this year. exactly what I meant. But yeah, I think Roosters will, uh, and, I, and that's not biased because I was like, I tipped the storm. Everyone's saying I was, I've been biased to Roosters or even I really haven't because I've never been confident. But in this game, I just feel like they're just on another level. This is this is finals time. Teams need to start gaining a little bit of momentum and it starts with games like this. Yeah. Uh, yep. You yeah. say something? No, no, no that's All right, let's jump on our last Saturday night game. Yeah, the Cowboys against the Sharks. Uh, Ponga and Tamara Martin are in. Justin O'Neill and Sean Fensum are out. The Sharks have an unchanged 17. Yep. I've tipped the Sharks by two. Cowboys have 11 regular players out, I believe I read. I'm not confident about the Sharks playing. This is going to be a low-scoring game. Mm. <sighs> Ponga is dangerous. The only reason... I've tipped the Sharks because we tipped them together. The only reason I tipped the Sharks 
to win, regardless of two points, ten points, or twenty points, is the fact of all those injuries. If they didn't lose all those players and and whatnot, uh, I would one hundred percent tip yeah, Cowboys, especially right. Cowboys needed. But don't be surprised because Cow- this is a must win for Cowboys. If they don't win, I feel like that's it for the Cowboys. So don't be surprised if they they take the Sharks, especially the way they're playing. The advantage for the Sharks is generally when they get flogged, they return with a flogging. Oh, well, they haven't. Generally. Generally. But again, for the Sharks, it's a must must win as well for that top four position. Yeah. So I, I think it's going to be a good game. I, it just frustrates me. Like, they get Sharks give away so many penalties and then do stupid knock-ons and, like, for feeder. Well, it's catching up with us. Overrated. It is catching. He hasn't had the year that he has previously. Like he, but he can. It's, yeah. it's like anyone. Like you can put the performance on if you want to. It's just laziness. At one stage, he was the best uh, front row in the game. Oh, by far. Yeah, and his potential is the best front row in the game. Oh, by far. Uh, and he just hasn't put it. But it's been the Sharks. Like by far. <laughs> Give away the most penalties, have the worst uh, like error rate in the comp, and now it's starting to catch up with them. And they can't now they're not winning games. Now they're starting to lose. Even if they've lost two, it's not like dire straits, but yep. they just don't look it. They no. do not look it. Not so. at all. But they can literally switch it from you. Just look at getting flogged by Manly and then coming up against the Roosters team. That was the best, like their best performance of 2017 was against that Roosters team. Like they just did everything right. Uh, so if they can switch that on, they could be the ones who win 54 to 4, not Storm against the Knights. They could be the ones who win. So it's, they're going to be hard up there as well. I just, yeah. You know, Morgan's obviously not. Uh, you know, he's, he's injured. He went off injured. So obviously he might be having a niggling injury. Same with Coot. Uh, I, yeah, I just feel at the end of the day that I suppose professionalism and the experience of the Sharks, I hope it shines through. I just wouldn't be surprised with the Cowboys one, but I've got to, I've got to tip the yeah, Sharks. I just feel like it's just going to be such a tight game. Hopefully Sharks make it into a grind. Hopefully we can defend well, but... We, you're trying to make it into grinds, but teams are just pushing you away. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, sharks by two. At both by two. Uh, let's jump on to the very first Sunday game. Uh, is this potentially the the game of the round? Is this potentially Chris to determine who makes it in the top eight? Well, if Raiders lose this, they're probably not going to make it. No, because they've Storm the last round. Yeah, they have Newcastle. Unless Storm, obviously, I've said it before. Unless they rest players, but yeah. that you can't go on that. Uh, Raiders are Raiders against Penrith. It's in Canberra, so unchanged seventeen. You remember the last game with two minutes left, the Raiders uh, <laughs> Penrith scored twice yeah. to win it uh, in a crazy comeback. Uh, in for the Pan- uh, Panthers is Katoa. Uh, Peter Wallace is out. Mitch Rain and Merrin are on extended bench. Peter Wallace being out is dangerous. I have a feeling they'll try to get Mitch Rain and Merrin into that of side course. against the Raiders. It's such an important It's a must game. win for both. It's a must win. I, I personally believe this is who determines who gets that eighth yeah. spot. This is it. Uh, I tipped the Raiders by 14. Yeah. I just think they're in such good form. Uh, mm. The outside backs, are, is there better outside backs? Uh, like centre uh, winger pairings? Maybe uh, well, I wouldn't Storm? Even, I wouldn't even say Lapana. Oh, I wouldn't even say them. I would literally just put it down to Croker and Cotrick. and Kotrick at the moment. Well, Leipano shined last week and, and the week before against the Sharks. So. Well, BJ went off injured. Yeah, uh, in the seventieth minute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was surprised to see that he was he was named. Uh, I tip Raiders by ten. It's going to be tough. I don't think Raiders are in form. I just think they're hungry. But coming up against the Panthers side, not that I despise them. I just don't believe they're as great as what it's appearing because they are beating all these teams outside the top eight. They've been overrated the whole year. Like, they were premiership favourites at one stage, like, at the start of the year. Everyone is talking them up to be, like, this top two Don't side. they every year? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Raiders at home, Viking clap, we've been there, we've experienced of it, we've experienced the atmosphere. Uh, yeah, I think I think Raiders, I, I, I just can't see Penrith doing it. I just think, like, Cleary might step up. Matt Moylan's a huge hindrance on the Panthers. Massive hindrance. I oh, think. unless he fires. I mean, he fires, he's brilliant. I'm sorry, but I just don't rate him anymore. Cleary's taken the reins. Unfortunately, he's 
you know, he's, he's getting lost in the back there and then he's trying too much and too hard and then knock-ons and stupid kicks and kicking out and seven tackle sets. Good to see Mansour back. Yes. His last two games have been very, very good. The one week, I don't play him in Super Coach. Shame. The one week uh, is the week he explodes. But if he wants to do that again, I'll play you, Mansour. <laughs> I'll play you. Uh, I think it'll be a grind. I think it'll come down to the last five minutes. We might even see a bit of golden point. Mm, I think uh, they'll, they'll do it about the same as what they did, like 24-10, yeah. 28-14, that kind of thing. I think it's going to be pretty easy for them, and the Raiders will put on a few points. All righty, let's jump on to the very last game now before we say who's going, it, uh, who's playing. It's obviously Manly, uh, that everyone knew. Uh, last week, Manly's missed tackles. Mm. I've never seen anything like it, ever. I think I've only seen about 40-ish. Uh, 53 missed tackles. Is that what I said to you? 52, 53, yeah. 53 missed tackles in that game. And 10 of them against Teddy. Yeah. But 53 missed tackles. I don't understand. Oh, they were... One of the drives, I can't remember who it was, but he ran through three of them. It was down the middle. Yeah. Yeah, it was down the middle. And it's just... It's not good enough. It is no. not good enough. And it's been Manly's issue is their defence. For some reason, they've switched off. They can obviously score points. Yep. But defensively, they were horrid. They were disgusting. Uh, so it's the Bulldogs up against Manly. Yep. Luckily, they don't have to worry about defence in this game because the Bulldogs don't know how to score. No. But Laika and Talau is in. Yep. Reynolds and Cassiano is out for Manly. Huge losses. Uh, Bri- yeah, Josh Reynolds, uh, calf, probably out for the season. Brian Kelly is in for Manly. Yep. Uh, Brad Parker done his ACL. Mm-hmm. Unfortunate for him. Uh, I tip Manly by 18. I think they'll score points. Bulldogs, you know, you don't really have to defend well against the Bulldogs because they don't put any on any players to score. I tip Manly by 30. Yeah. I could have went more. It's the Bulldogs. Manly, again, they're, they're fighting now for... Oh, like, they're definitely going to make the eight, but they're fighting for momentum. This is what it's all about now, coming to the finals. You don't want to lose to the West Tigers in the last two minutes and then lose back-to-back to the Bulldogs, who can't even score more than 14 points a game or average four points in the first half. You know what game I can pick? Bulldogs against the Warriors. <laughs> you know, I'll nearly say the Warriors. Yeah, I... I I'll nearly say the Warriors. They're the two teams. Because Warriors can score. Yeah. Warriors can score points, and actually, you know, even though they got flogged by Raiders, they still scored, what, 16 points. Uh, but, yeah, on this game, look, if Manly make fi- another 53 missed tackles, they're still going to win. They could literally make 100 missed tackles, and yeah. I think. And it's nothing against, there may be Bulldog, sorry, there may be, of course there's Bulldog fans on here. There's nothing against the Bulldogs team. Well, they wouldn't be happy with the way they're, they're no, performing. No, that's where I was going with it. Yeah. Thanks for interrupting me, Chris. Oh, no, I wasn't interrupting. I was just reading your mind. Oh, dude, 20s. Uh, yeah, in this game, there's not too much to talk about. Obviously, Josh Reynolds being out. Uh, Cassiano. Cassiano out. Two huge outs. Uh, are they going to play Chase? Did they play Chase Stanley in the... At halfback? Yeah, again? I'm pretty sure. Uh, like it would be, unless my bias... Oh, that, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah with That's McCrawley. disgusting. Well, That's disgusting. Who else is going to step in that Oh, position? I'll put Aim Tolton in there. He'd, <laughs> he'd probably go better. That's just... That's awful. I, I, I physically feel ill... Dude, you might have to take him to hospital with yeah. the fact that they're putting Chase Stanley at number seven. He's done nothing, dude. Well, they got no one else. Apparently, there's a, a guy uh, playing in the Hon Cup who scored a ton of tries, and you know why they can't get him in the team? Why? Salary cap issues. Of course. The, the, at the moment, the number one team with salary cap issues is the Bulldogs. And Manly. And manly. But that's, uh, yeah, that's but is it is honestly it's because they're over like paying for players who aren't uh, worthy of that amount of money. Imagine how much they're paying Will Hop Why did decide before he um, was like when he wasn't playing Sunday games and paying him like as much as or more than you're playing players that want to play every game. All right. That wraps up review, preview, and prediction for this week, round 24. Again, don't forget competition. Uh, share the YouTube video. Share it on Facebook. Uh, all you need to do is literally comment. Yeah, uh, first try scorer and the team and the winning margin. That's exactly right. Share the post. I'm Luke Blundell. I'm Chris Casella. Bye. See ya.